Hey everyone, Jesse from G28 CNC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a locating fixture for your CNC router, just like this one, so you can blast parts out back to back. So, why would you want a fixture? In my case, I make a ton of these lights, and I was wasting a lot of time double sided taping, clamping things down. Uh, setting my origin, all of that. So I came up with this little fixture that I can pop these acrylic blanks in and out of, pull up a new file and just hit send and then do it over and over again. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually design this fixture and I prefer to use SolidWorks so I'm going to be rocking it in that. Um, so I'm just going to set my decimals to three places. There's a couple couple dimensions that are uh, uh, 0.125, things like that. So um, we're just going to draw this out real quick. This is an 8 by 7 fixture, so I'm going to use that smart dimensioning. All right, and this is MDF uh, three quarter inch, so I'm going to extrude that out to three quarters. All right, so now I'm normal too. I'm going to make a sketch plane here and just uh, put all these dimensions. And I took from that acrylic blank that I have. I'm adding some dog bones into the corners, so I know that uh, it's just going to pop in and out without a lot of issues. Going to add a little radius on that corner and do an extrude through all cut so I can have a place to uh, pop that light out when I'm all done. All right, so one of the more critical features here is this little uh, hole on each side, which is gonna be for a dowel pin to go through. And that's actually gonna go all the way through this three quarter inch piece into the spoil board, so that's how you actually place this onto the machine. All right, so last but not least, I need a little locating hole on the side here, which is gonna be what my diamond drag bit locates to. So I want that to be a half an inch from the left side of the acrylic, and I want it to be horizontal to the bottom of the acrylic. So this is when I load up my file, I'm going to place this fixture on the CNC. I'm going to move my drag bit right into this hole that's here. And then I can hit send. So this actually corresponds to another file that we're going to make in CarveCo, which is where I do all of my engraving tool paths. So that's it. I did a, an extrude uh, cut through all for those holes. And... Uh, we're good to go here. So uh, we're just going to save this. I really don't like uh, the 3D experience saving files to the cloud thing. I like to save locally. So uh, I'm going to save it as a SolidWorks part, but you could do an STL, a step file. Uh, what else do we have? A Parasolid here, that uh, XT. Um, and I just, you know, any of those will work, but I, I, I can just import SolidWorks right into Fusion, which is super cool. You don't need to do a lot. Um, all right, so now we're going to hop over to Fusion. Got that same model we just had. Uh, I can move this around. I'm going to expand this out. Bodies, I've got a body here. Very cool. All right, so the next thing to do is move from design over to the manufacturer workspace. This is where we're actually gonna do our tool paths in here. So uh, the first thing you're gonna want is go up and do a new setup. I've already got mine right here, so I'll just run through my, uh, my settings there. So um, not super critical, but if you have your machine defined, that's really helpful. So, um, we're going to drop down here. I've got my uh, Bulkman 3D Queen B. It's a 750 by 750 millimeters. Um, 
we're doing a milling operation, but there are other drop downs here uh, for turning, cutting, 3D printing. I'm using the uh, model orientation stock uh, box point is my bottom left um, you could choose center you know whatever whatever works for you but I I like to do that uh, bottom left for the majority and I've got my uh, model is the body fixture I don't need to do anything here uh, so we're cool we're going to hop over to stock. We're going to define our stock that we're cutting this out of. So this is a three quarter inch st um, MDF, which is great because I want the fixture to be three quarter inch, but I am going to add a little bit of material around the perimeter because I am cutting this out of a kind of a scrap piece that's a little bit larger than the fixture itself. So uh, that way I can see it. Uh, getting cut out of that. I'm going to add some tabs to hold it down when I clamp it to the spoil board so that way I could just visualize it better but you'll see I haven't added any material to the top or bottom but it uh, it is kind of overflowing the uh, sides of the the fixture body. Alright so yep yeah, we got that three quarter inch there um, you could define how this is fixed to the machine. I mean, I've just got got it laying flat on the machine. Autodesk or uh, Fusion, I should say, has preloaded uh, kind of graphics of machines in here, which is kind of cool. I didn't really mess with that at all, but it is cool just to see it on a machine. And uh, we're using the uh, 54 work coordinate system here, so we're cool with that. We're going to go ahead and uh, start doing our tool paths. So first I'm going to make a pocket. Then I'm going to do a perimeter around to cut this out. Some drilling for those dowel points and uh, also a drill. I'm going to do a tool change and drill this little spot out here for the diamond drag bit to kind of locate to. Alright, so I've got my uh, machine that I had already predefined and I'm going to start with that adaptive tool path to clear out this pocket let me just drag this out so you can see the tools that I've used um, I typically use the same tools I would say for like 90% of what I do I've got this O flute quarter inch by a three inch overall length which is great I use that I would say actually for the majority of what I do. It just blasts through material. Um, but I've also got an eighth inch, uh, same thing, O flute, two inch overall length. Um, and I'll have links for all these tools too at the end of the, uh, the video if you want to pick them up. They've worked out great for me. Very inexpensive, but uh, really uh, long lasting. All right, so we're going to do that adaptive tool. I've pulled it up, the quarter inch O flute. I've got my uh, speeds and feeds in here. Um, I'm running this at 70 inches per minute and a 30 inch per minute uh, plunge. I'm going to select that uh, pocket geometry here for the adaptive tool path. Not a lot else to do in here. I'm going to set my heights so I don't don't have to do a lot with the clearance height or anything but I do want to define um, you know where I'm starting that cut from which is going to be stock top and then how deep I want that adaptive pocket to go which is going to be to that selected contour so that that blue that we had highlighted if you get confused with anything you can also hover over all of these things and they'll give you a really nice pop-up that explains it so we're cool here. I am going to do this climbing instead of conventional. I'm not going to do multiple depths. This is just, uh, just like a little over an eighth of an inch deep. So I'm just going to blast into this thing with that O flute. I'm not going to leave any stock. I'm just going to do this as a uh, roughing and finish pass. 
Um, there's not a lot else in here. I do like to do the, uh, the helical ramp. Um, but in this case, uh, you, you could really do either one. This is MDF. It's not like this is going to shock the, uh, the cutter very much. So either one, good to go. If we were going to do any uh, pre-drill or entry positions, we could define those here. Uh, again, you get that pop-up. But uh, that's it. So not really complicated. I'm just going to check over the toolpath, make sure it looks correct. Go up to simulate here. Get to do a quick little playthrough here. Again, this is MDF, so you don't need to go crazy. I mean, it's pretty forgiving. It's not like a aluminum or a hardwood or something that you're going to burn out or rip off the uh, material from the machine. But, yep, that looks cool. I've got those dog bones a little bit in the corners there. Yep, good to go exit out and we'll hop to that next one. I mean, you're going to see that I still have to cut this out of the stock. It's another nice thing about the tool pass. It kind of gives you an idea where you're at uh, with the green. So we're going to go into that contour and then notice that I've got those tabs which are going to hold this down. After I cut it out, because I'm just going to clamp this and probably three or four places out of that larger stock. I'm cutting this one in multiple depths, you can see that blue outline. So this is just a contour cut. I'm going to use that same quarter inch O flute. Same speeds. The geometry is going to be the uh, contour going around. So that blue highlight there, I selected the bottom. This is also where we add the tabs in. I've got that tabs checked. I've got four points selected. Top height is the stock top and we're going down to that contour I selected. I'm also gonna add an offset in to make sure that I cut all the way through. That That's one of the most annoying things if you've experienced it, thinking you're getting all the way through the material and come to find out you still have to cut it out. So I just do a little uh, 50 thousandths offset to make sure I cut through the stock completely. Um, I am gonna do multiple depths on this one Honestly, I feel like the O flute could handle cutting through much faster in one shot, but uh, I'm not going to risk it, catch this thing on fire, so we're going to do uh, an eighth of an inch step down. Again, those uh, select positions, but I'm not going to do anything there either. Alright, so there's our tool path. Again, we can uh, zoom in here. You're going to see those depths that I've got it cutting at. And uh, hop over to simulate. Just make sure I didn't do anything too stupid here. All right, let's see what we got. Yep, nothing too crazy. Yep, jump to the end. Great. Sometimes it's funny not to do the simulation and just be surprised when uh, something goes wild. <laughs> All right, hopping down. We're going to do the uh, first drilling operation. The, uh, the peck drill is pretty cool, you know, just using an end mill quarter inch so I can take some quarter inch uh, steel stock and cut that down for my dowels. 
not a lot of settings in here but you do just want to make sure that you're you're peck drilling and not just plunging you know an inch an inch and a half deep here you know that that wouldn't be great the plunge is is still rough if it's deep enough on MDF so uh, yep to do this we're just gonna select the holes that I want to drill I had those two holes that were quarter inch uh, there's some options if you know select holes of same diameter some other things in here but uh, I have two holes I don't need to go crazy the optimize is pretty cool as well um, it just kind of optimizes the order those are drilled in so uh, this is pretty much the same as the contour we did however the whole bottom isn't going to be the stock bottom in this case I am going to offset that by three-eighths of an inch to make sure that uh, my dowel has somewhere to fit into the spoil board you know so when I when I run this file it's actually going to go three-eighths of an inch below the stock into the spoil board um, so something to look out for you know we're not looking at it on the machine right now but I have an insert table I have threaded inserts uh, kind of set below the top of the spoil board so when you lay this down you want to make sure that you're not going to be uh, drilling into those inserts that would be a shock for the for the end mill this is definitely one of the cases that you're going to want to use the simulation if you haven't used the drilling operation before just to make sure before you go to physically run this on your machine it's kind of easy to mess up some of those pec settings and have it just plunge um, you know like I said an inch deep in one shot yep so this looks good exit out of here uh, all that's left is one more drill um, this is going to be the eighth inch this makes like three three little peck steps it's really fast um, so we can pretty much just duplicate the settings that we had before um, make sure you select that eighth inch tool same thing select that that whole face uh, still going from stock top but uh, yep catch those settings accumulated uh, pecking is a sixteenth of an inch and that's it we could simulate this it, li it literally is going to come down three times and in the video when I machine this it's really fast it's kind of funny to have to do a tool change for this but I I wanted it to be exactly an eighth of an inch all right so that's it we got it go up here to export this um, I've got my use machine configuration I'm using the gerbil post processor I have two different post processors for gerbil in here but um, they just do different things so making sure I export this um, in metric specifically millimeters I'm splitting these by tool I'm taking off that um, M6 I still output the tool number and this is kind of important so just make sure you've got clearance height selected or I guarantee you're gonna uh, just run up to home if you don't have limit switches it's just gonna go past and crash so uh, just pick that clearance height
not too much else here. There's some uh, built-in features with the um, run rapids. Um, yep, allow helical movements. Um, I didn't change too much there. So do notice also that next to the settings, uh, there's another one called operations that has the different operations and tool paths here. Um, so I just click all the ones that use the same tool and export that as one file and then export the uh, tool change to that eighth inch as another file. So I think we're good in here. So I've already got these saved. I don't need to do this here, but I'm going to show you where to find these files now. Uh, yep, so you see everything appears correct here. So Fusion saves into Documents. There's a Fusion 360 folder. And then NC Programs. That's kind of a default path to get to your tool paths. And I've saved these into... Um, a 5x5 five five engraving template folder within that. So you see that we got that quarter inch O flute and an eighth an inch O flute. So let's send it. It's always cool to me to uh, go from the tool paths in, in Fusion or CarveCo and then actually get to, to watch it unfold on the machine. It doesn't always go as, as expected, but. Um, you know, for the most part, it's it's pretty close. Um, it's also funny to film for YouTube and, you know, all the social media because you can't put your dust boot on. It's very uninteresting to see uh, some bristles dragging over and then something's revealed. You know, it, it, it looks way better to, to see the uh, end mill in action but it's very dusty, especially this MDF. So uh, I will say that you're either going to want to be in there with a vacuum as it's running or, uh, you know, run it with a dust boot if you have it. All right, so we're doing that, uh, the contour now. Like I said, this probably, probably could have gone deeper on these passes, but this was fine. Um, you know, that MDF is, is pretty soft. It's pretty forgiving, and you can really just plow through it with a one or two flute. Um, yep, so we're pretty much through. I think there's like two more passes here. You'll start to see it lift out as it does the, uh, the tabs. It just steps up a little bit. Yep, starting to do it now. There we go. So I think this is the last pass. Perfect. Now we got that peck drill. Um, yeah, so notice how deep it goes. It's going into the spoil board right through the this piece of MDF that I have mounted on the top. And uh, that's it for the quarter inch. Clean it up here. We're just doing a quick tool change, putting in that eighth inch O flute, setting the height. I have a probe, I just, I never use it. I f feel like it's just easier to uh, set it manually. There you go, three, three little passes and it's done. All right, so we're cleaning it up one more time. And we'll pop this thing off. So yeah, I mean, it's a really simple fixture. Um, the cool thing is, is you just don't need to like use clamps or anything. I was using double-sided tape, all this, you know, gluing it down. I blew through tape. So uh, this made it a lot more simple for me. All right, so I'm just, uh, I've cut this dowel out of uh, quarter inch steel. I'm deburring. I threw it in into my uh, cordless drill. I'm just deburring, and then I'm going to add like a little bit of a chamfer on the the edge, so it kind of guides into the holes a little bit better. And then I just glue it in, you know, a little bit of glue, 
and then uh, hammer it in the rest of the way. Really, any cyanoacrylate or super glue is going to work out. Um, and if you want it to set really fast, or if you know, I'm I'm a sloppy guy, so I have a little drip here. I'm just going to get some uh, accelerant, give it a little blast of that, and that dries it pretty instantly. Yeah, so I got this activator. Uh, I think I bought this as a set. You can buy it like three packs of activator and uh, and glue, but it'll it'll work with any cyanoacrylate. All right, so now I just line it up with the holes and it pops in. That's it, and it it holds. You know, this doesn't this isn't gonna have to withstand any lifting forces because I'm just dragging a a diamond bit over it. So uh, it works out great. All right, so on to our engraving template, right? Because I, I need to have a matching file for this fixture that I've made, which is going to have the, um, the offset from my alignment hole, the eighth inch hole, which is technically my origin, and then where I place the artwork. So I already have this template. Uh, made. I'm just going to pull that up, renumbering it so it'll uh, go to the top here. So let's open that up. This is really simple. I've already got a bunch of files made from it too. Alright, so you're going to notice that I have kind of this full, full stock material with an or origin, the uh, red and green down at the bottom, and then an offset and uh, I've got this outline, which is the size of the acrylic. And then I've got that left-hand side and then the half-inch offset to my origin. So, uh, you know, I can open this up and, and edit this uh, rectangle that is the dimensions of my acrylic, 5.114 and 5.5. So, really simple file. Again, you know, <clears throat> I'm lazy, so anything that's simple and fast. So let's take a look at this from the uh, different view. You see that origin. And then uh, I can just import any vector I have. So I'm going to pop up here, uh, go to my uh, vector files here. I'll just pick something random here. Uh, go up to uh, animals. Yeah. Cool puggle. A great. My brother has a puggle. Uh, adorable. There we go. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, you know, I I mean, I can just move this around inside of my uh, kind of limitation area, the boundaries of my acrylic. <clears throat> you could align if you go up to vector and align there's some different alignment things here uh, but just eyeball it here all right so a couple of different things we could do here you know I've got this vector file I just need to uh, pick the right tool so uh, I don't have any tool paths yet. There's a couple different ways to do this. So I'm going to select the vector I want. And I could either do this as a, a profile where I'm tracing over, or um, if you use a pocket and inlay, it'll actually fill that vector in, which is also cool. So we'll go through both. But right now we're just going to choose contour and go along. I've found that an eighth of an inch is a good depth for the drag bit. You know, it's got a, it's spring loaded, but it needs to push down to give some pressure. So, eighth of an inch has worked out great for me. We don't want bridges. I think that just shows that that must have been left over from the last thing I did. And sure, we'll define a uh, material thickness just for uh, you know giggles here, but. Uh, that acrylic's 0.15 thick. 
All right. So um, last thing we need to do is select a tool. I have made my own tools for the diamond drag bits. Um, they're a little bit different than typical tools. It's, it's kind of hard to preview without having modified uh, like a V-bit. So uh, I chose a V-bit and just made some setting changes here and you'll see why. So let's just try going through both. I'll try this uh, 90, 90 uh, degree, the first one. And I'll show you what happens here. So uh, I'll just give it a generic name, engraving. So if I calculate this, sure, it's going to make a path. You're going to see it's just kind of tracing over that vector, and it's going to show it an eighth of an inch deeper. And let's simulate what this looks like. <clears throat> Not the greatest. Kind of hard to see what's going on here, right? It looks like it's it's doing this uh, in like a almost like a stipple. You know, like it's coming down and moving back up really frequently. Yeah, so that doesn't look great. So I'm going to show you why I have two. Let's delete this uh, simulation real quick. And uh, pull our vector back up here. All right. So let's try this again. Delete that toolpath. All right, we're going to pop back in. I'm going to pick the other one that I had made. So this one um, has a little bit different of an angle to it in the um, in the V-bit definition. This is like two and a half degrees instead of one degree. All right, so it looks the same in the tool path, but it's going to simulate a little bit differently. All right, cool. Right, so that's what we're expecting. It's easier to see this thing. It literally dragged it over it. Um, and that's kind of what you'd imagine you'd see for a toolpath. So um, just want to show that you might have to mess with a custom tool a little bit to get the settings that you want. So let's delete this. We're going to now try the pocket. You know, it's going to actually fill in that vector instead of tracing over the outside. It's going to fill in the in-between and almost as if we'd drawn this with like a fat tip marker, right? So we're going to choose inlay tool path. We're going to do a female pocket. We've already selected the uh, vector. I'm going to stick with that uh, eighth inch depth. And I'm going to use the same tool that we just used. And now you're going to see why this doesn't work. All right, so uh, you've got your um, strategy. Um, I like to use the raster. It's that it gives it like a hatching, hatching look, you know, instead of doing like a spiral it's just this back and forth but i do like doing the uh interior first and then the the profile pass last because it cleans up the edges um but with this we need to do a step over so let's pop in um back to the tool and we're gonna do let's do 10 thou step over um, the step over is just going to make those lines spaced a little bit farther apart, but okay, here we go. So failed to create pocket. The tool is too large, right? So I had this set at a two and a half degree. It can't, it can't do that step over. So hence my other custom tool, look, it's like a line, right? So it's, uh, one degree, um, it makes it, it you're basically just tricking the uh the processor into thinking that you have this like infinitely small tool 
Um, so you can do that step over. So if I run this simulation, there you go. It's basically just doing, like I said, uh, like a, a cross hatching kind of engraving. It's really cool actually when uh, when you see it unfold on the machine physically. It looks really cool. Um, so I recommend making two different tools. One for doing this uh, cross hatch uh, pocket filling and one for doing just a straight up uh, drag profile. Um, and these, you know, the time's pretty accurate. This says it's going to be nine minutes. That's not bad to do this puggle that's uh, cross hatching, you know. Um. All right, so we've got our toolpath ready to rock. Oh, close out of here, sorry. We are going to export this toolpath. We've got our female pocket. Let's uh, browse. I'll just save this to the uh, to the desktop. Uh, give this a name. We'll do a pug tool path, and uh, just you know, save it to somewhere that's easy to grab. Um, and. save that one thing that bugs me out is that it uh when you save it doesn't close that you know so you're like wait did, did something actually happen but uh yep you're good to go so let's close out of here we're going to open up a universal g-code sender i have found i was using candle for a while and uh, i was having a lot of problems it just like didn't didn't always perform you know, sometimes a lot of unexpected things would happen, so I finally made this switch to, uh, this is, uh, the 64-bit version of, uh, Universal G-Code Sender Platform. Um, really cool program. Uh, you can add a ton of macros. It's got a ton of macros already built in. Um, so, yeah, that's been great. I re highly recommend it. All right, so let's find that pug tool path. And uh, here we go, loaded, great. Here's the uh, tool path. If you need to spin this, there's a little uh, orbiting tool over there. We got our origin set, that seems right. Perfect, and uh, let's zoom in here. So, all right, we do indeed have a uh, little line stepped that are Hopefully our ten thousandths uh, apart. Yes, yeah, so this this looks great. There's a lot of yellow. Looks like it's going to lift out a lot, but that's fine. I'm going to trust that nine minute time. All right, we are good to send this. So here's the fixture. Just showing what that engraving bit's going to look like in that hole and then uh, once you find that origin you just set your height to the plastic and engrave it so let's see this thing rock just do a bunch of files back to back set my origin set my height and then I'm uh, off to the races all right one done on to the next, the Breath of the Wild Zelda logo. It's a really cool one. And that's the point, you know, um, if you're just doing the same file over and over, you're literally just taking plastic out and hitting send again. Uh, but in my case, you know, I, I run different files back to back, so... I hope this uh, works out great for you, and uh, leave a comment if you end up trying it out. Thank <laughs> you.